Hey everyone, we're continuing our Revelations review here and we're moving on to Cult of Veror. And before we get into that, I do want to remind people that I am giving these cards spice values, which is how interested I am in trying the cards, building new decks around them. And uh, this is subjective. It's not necessarily related to the power of the card. And uh, if you feel very differently about a card than I do, I'd really like to hear your opinion, either in the comments or queue up in-game when the set comes out and uh, teach me a lesson. Show me how these cards are, are used and, and show me something new and creative. All right, so we're going to jump right into it. We'll start with Alita's Attendant. This card is a four spice for me. Uh, I think that it has a very clear kind of deck that you want to build with it. It is a morale burn card. It's one purity, it's one cost. So it's very easy to put into a deck. And because it's one purity, we can really get creative with how we wanna pair it up with other factions. I think the obvious is Descendants of the Dragons here, but um, we can also play it in a more dedicated Cult of Veror or Burn deck. So cool card. Uh, I think it is gonna let you play Moral Burn in a very different way than you have been able to historically because this card is a repeatable source of morale burn for Cult of Error. Very cool. Next, we have Dramatic Escape. And this card kind of turns a character into a Vero Death Worshipper and then kind of does a heat wave. It only hits the battlefield, but... Um, seems cool uh i don't know where you use it um other than like i think i think in draft this card's amazing um but i think this is a three spice for me just because like i think the card's really cool and i think the effect's really cool but i don't have like a clear vision for it in mind for what i want to do with it so I will let some of you show me how to use that card, and uh, then I will copy you. <laughs> um, okay, let's move on to the next one. Painful Lesson. Um, I think this card is probably a three for me as well, uh, because I think it is a cool card because it enables you the ability to draw multiple cards on kind of a one cost card. So it's a fairly low commitment. Uh, it's also relatively easy, easily included in any deck um, because it's it's one cost and it replaces itself and the condition to draw a card is fairly low. Uh, the recall here is significant because um, at some point this is going to turn into uh, a single card that has converted into two cards. Um, and I think that it's fair to mention that this is probably really for a control deck. Uh, it could be maybe put in a deck like the one I described before, a morale burn deck with the Alita's Attendant, uh, or you could go into a more uh, traditional deck like an Oblivion deck where admittedly you can't really tap into the recall effectively uh, or as effectively with an Oblivion deck, but the fact that it's a one cost card that draws you a card uh, that discounts your Oblivion by one, you might not even need to rely on the recall effect um, for it to be worth your while. So that's a three spice for me. And here we go. This one, this one's getting a one spice for me. Infernal Summoner. It It is a character in double Cult of Veror that kind of is in a demon synergy type of, of category, but uh, it's just not doing it for me. We've got a lot of demon synergy cards to choose from, and this one doesn't feel like it brings a whole lot new to the table. Uh, but when I say one spice, I will caveat that that is specifically for constructed play. I can totally imagine going in on this in draft as a, a card that um, generates some value. And again, I don't think every card needs to be super interesting. You do need some cards that exist for that draft environment or for a learning experience for players and uh, i think it serves that purpose well but as a player who loves deck building this one isn't it for me okay 
And next, Scepter of the Deep. And this is a five spice for me. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'm really kind of shocked that this is an uncommon and not a higher rarity because the effect is just so, so wild. Uh, so just to start things off, demons you control have their morale cost reduced to zero. If you're playing a demon uh, tribal deck, this might be worth it really just for that, depending on the matchup. But the part of the card that's very interesting to me is so it, it gives you zero cost demons that shuffle into your deck every turn. And I think some people are thinking, oh, well, this is cool because I get zero cost demons to play in my demon tribal deck and zero cost demons are great. They're super efficient, but that's not why I'm excited about the card. The reason I'm excited about the card is that in a really long grindy game, sometimes you start getting close to running out of cards in your deck or the cards remaining in your deck are all kind of fluff and they don't do anything for you. This card in a control versus control matchup is really, really strong. The ability to put more cards in your deck allows you to hit the trading post every turn and your opponent, they can't do that because they're going to run out of cards. It's, it's not so much that um, you don't run out of cards often in Infinity Wars, but that's because once you get to like, 10 cards left in your deck, you kind of stop using the trading post. But with this card, you can be smashing the trading posts once or maybe even twice a turn in that control mirror. So really excited for this. Uh, I don't know if I have like a specific deck I want to jam it into right away, but the 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 possibilities behind it with that um, really grindy gameplay style excite me. And then our last card, Triumvirate of Power, and this has to be a five spice. It lets you search your deck for three cards with different names, put them into your hand, and reduce their cost by three. It's one purity, which is really interesting because it means we could go into some really weird combos that other factions playing with each other make possible. And as a matter of fact, if we're if we're going down that road this could be an enabler for an Enya deck to put together a combo that is just literally not possible without this card and without Enya. Uh, I don't know what that combo is. Um, and I, I, it's, this card is, is when I see somebody play it, I am expecting to see something wild, uh, but I don't know what that thing is yet. If people have come up with some combos, let me know, because I'm really curious to see what you do with this card. Um, like, surely this card wins you the game, right? It's 12 cost, and it sets up the most explosive turn you could possibly have, but really there's so many possibilities. Um, I might have to spend some more time thinking about what to do with this card, but I'm giving it a five spice either way. And that wraps up a cult of bearer and uh, I'll see you all soon in the next one.